The Story of Dr. Doolittle by Hugh Lofting. A note to the reader. A classic story rests in your hands. The characters are famous. The tale is timeless. This great classic for children by Dalmatian Press has been carefully condensed and adapted from the original version, which you really must read when you're ready for every detail. We kept the well-known phrases for you, we kept the author's style, and we kept the important imagery and heart of the tale. Literature is terrific fun. It encourages you to think. It helps you dream. It is full of heroes and villains, suspense and humor, adventure and wonder, and new ideas. It introduces you to writers who reach out across time to say, do you want to hear a story I wrote? Curl up and enjoy. Chapter One, Puddleby. Once upon a time, many years ago, when our grandfathers were little children, there was a doctor and his name was Doolittle, John Doolittle, MD. MD means that he was a real doctor and knew a whole lot. He lived in a town called Puddleby on the Marsh. All the folks, young and old, knew him well. Whenever he walked down the street in his high hat, everyone would say, there goes the doctor, he's a clever man. And the dogs and the children would all run up and follow him. Even the crows that lived in the church tower would caw and nod their heads. The house he lived in was quite small, but his garden was very large. It had stone seats and weeping willow trees hanging over. His sister Sarah Doolittle was a housekeeper for him, but the doctor looked after the garden himself. He was very fond of animals and kept many kinds of pets. He had goldfish in the pond at the bottom of his garden. He had rabbits in the pantry, white mice in his piano, a squirrel in his linen closet, and a hedgehog in the cellar. He had a cow with a calf too, and an old lame horse and chickens and pigeons and two lambs and many other animals. But his favorite pets were Dab Dab the duck, Jip the dog, Gub Gub the baby pig, Polynesia the parrot, and the owl, Tutu. His sister grumbled about all these animals. She said they'd made the house untidy. And one day, an old lady came to see the doctor and she sat on the hedgehog who was sleeping on the sofa. The old lady never came back to see the doctor after that. Then his sister, Sarah Doolittle, came to see him and said, John, sick people will not come and see you when you keep all these animals in the house. We are getting poorer every day because the best people will not come here. But I like the animals better than the best people, said the doctor. You are ridiculous, said his sister and walked out of the room. So as time went on, the doctor got more and more animals and fewer and fewer people came to see him till at last no one came except Matthew Mug, the cat food man, who didn't mind any kind of animals. But the cat food man wasn't very rich and he only got sick once a year at Christmas time. Even then, he only gave the doctor six pence for a bottle of medicine. Six pence a year wasn't enough to live on, even in those days long ago. If the doctor hadn't had some money saved up in his money box, no one knows what would have happened. And he kept on getting still more pets, and of course it cost a lot to feed them, and the money he had saved grew littler and littler. Then he sold his piano and let the mice live in a dresser drawer. But the money he got for that didn't last very long. So he sold the brown suit he wore on Sundays and went on becoming poorer and poorer.
And now when he walked down the street in his high hat, people would say to one another, there goes John Doolittle, MD. There was a time when he was the best known doctor in the West Country. Look at him now. He has no money and his stockings are full of holes. But the dogs and the cats and the children still ran up and followed him through the town, the same as they had done when he was rich.